This video is intended for ASERA members who plan to retire within the next 60 days. If you aren't sure that you want to retire, please stop watching the video and review our How to Retire page on www.acera.org. There's a link on the page where you found this video. There you'll find everything that you need to help you make a decision about when to retire. If you're still watching, you should be ready to retire within the next 60 days. I'm going to switch to my computer screen now to show you what you need to do to start the retirement process. All right, so now we're looking at the ACERA homepage, which is www.acera.org. So from here, we're gonna click on the Retire Now link. And from there, you're going to see all these different steps for the retirement process. For the purpose of this video, we're going to go through step three, complete your retirement packet. As you scroll down, you'll see the retirement application here, which is one of the most important forms in the whole retirement process. So I'm going to click on the retirement application and you will see that it opens in a new tab. Um, and the first thing that I'm going to do is download this. So if I hover my mouse, you can see where my mouse is. If I hover it up here in the upper right, there's this download link and then I'm going to click that and it opens this menu here. So when I download this, um, I'm gonna save it in a place that's gonna be good for me. Um, the desktop is easy, so I'm gonna save it onto my desktop right now. So I'll go ahead and click save. Um, now, uh, when I've saved it, you'll see that something happened in the bottom left of my screen there. Um, I have this uh, downloads tray that popped up. So if I click this little up arrow and I click show in folder, then it will open up to where I saved it. All right, so in your uh, desktop or wherever you've saved it, uh, you'll see this application for service retirement revised 10.06.16. Um, go ahead and double click that and um, you will open it in Adobe Acrobat. So do that now. So now we're looking at Adobe Acrobat. This is the form opened up in that program. It might look a little bit different for you. Um, so if it does, don't worry about that. Um, the reason that we're doing it this way is so that you can save a copy locally to your computer and then you can print it out from there. Uh, make sure that you save changes regularly. Um, so you can see that if I type in um, a name here, um, I'll have the ability to uh, go ahead and now save this here. And so you can click save as, and that will pop up a new window for you to save it. Um, and you can choose where you want to save it from there. So I'm not, I'm not gonna do that right now, um, but in any case, uh, you'll wanna make sure that you do that um, periodically as you're going through this so that you don't lose all your work um, just in case. So uh, in this application, um, there's a few very, very important sections for you to fill out and make sure that it's accurate information uh, because we rely on you to provide accurate information to ACERA in order to process your retirement benefits. So this first section where it says name, we need your full name as it shows on your ID um, or your passport, not any nicknames here. So it's gonna be your full name, your date of birth. Um, so make sure that you enter that correctly. Um, last four of your social, um, your address, we need your physical address for this. Um, so this is going to be um, where you're actually living. So don't put a PO box here. Um, city, state, and zip, also very important. Um, home email address, that's going to be important because we may need to contact you via email. Um, so go ahead and plug that in as well. And then you can uh, optionally elect to receive ACERA news to your email address as well. So um, you can unsubscribe at any time if you don't want that. Um, as far as uh, phone numbers, um, we definitely need at least one phone number for you. So um, if you wanna enter all three, that's great. Um, you don't need to do that necessarily. Um, we don't need your department number um, or your department or position. So uh, feel free to leave those sections blank if you don't know them. As far as the next section, so last day on the job will be and first day in retirement will be. Um, those are really, really important. So we need to make sure that you guys enter that information in there. Um, for last day on the job, this is going to be your last day in paid status with the employer. So that will be either a regular working day, um, a vacation day, sick leave, floating holiday, some kind of accrual, um, but it needs to be uh, some type of pay from the employer as your last day on the job. Your first day in retirement will likely be that very next day. Um, we have more information on our website about choosing your retirement date. Um, so if you're still not sure exactly which date you want, um, we recommend that you check out our How to Retire page and review that uh, one more time before um, just plugging some dates in here. So I estimate my total service credit, which is the next section. Um, you can go ahead and leave that blank um, if you don't know it. Um, otherwise, you can enter some information here. Um, it doesn't matter either way. 
Um, this next section, are you aware of any pending administrative appeal, arbitration, or settlements? This is super important. You have to choose yes or no here. Um, go ahead and select that. doesn't matter um, which one it does. It just has to be true, whichever one you select. Um, and then the next section here, um, when you eventually print out this form, um, what you'll need to do is initial in each of these sections where it says initials. Um, so make sure that you go ahead and do that. There's four sections here where you need to do initials. So make sure you get all of them. Otherwise your application will be considered incomplete and we'll need you to complete it um, again, possibly. So just make sure that you get that taken care of. So as soon as you filled out all that critical information, uh, section one is done um, and then you can move on to section two. So now for section two. So um, if you have reciprocity, um, that means that you've established reciprocity with another public retirement system that's eligible. You'll need to list that information here. Um, if you're not sure if you've established reciprocity or not, uh, go ahead and go to our website, uh, the page acera.org slash reciprocity. And there's more information about what that is and what it might mean for you. Um, so if you're going to uh, establish, or if you have established reciprocity rather, um, make sure that you do put this information here. One really important piece of information about this is you must retire um, with each agency on the same date. So this date of retirement with the reciprocal agency should definitely match your first day in retirement up here in section one. If they don't match, that's a problem. Okay, one other really important note if you have reciprocity, you need to retire from both systems separately. So by turning in this application to ACERA, it is not going to retire you from the other agency. You have to contact them separately and go through their separate retirement process. It's probably going to look different um, and they will have just different instructions altogether. Uh, so make sure that you do those things concurrently. If you don't have reciprocity, go ahead and skip this section and move on to section three. All right, so next is section three for marital status. Um, so this section is very important, so make sure you fill it out uh, with all the information that applies. Um, the first section that you'll see is your current marital, marital status. So go ahead and uh, choose the marital status that applies for you. If you're currently married um, or in a state registered domestic partnership, go ahead and click that one. Um, divorced means you're currently divorced. Um, single means that you have never been married or in a state registered domestic partnership. Widowed uh, means that your spouse has passed away. Um, so make sure that you fill out the information accurately here. Um, and then uh, once this is all complete, you can go ahead and move on to the next section. Um, one uh, piece of information about this, if you are divorced, um, if you do end up selecting that box, um, then we do need you to submit the uh, divorce paperwork for your divorce. So everything related to that divorce needs to come to us, Sarah. Um, go ahead and read this piece at the bottom of the application because that applies to you. Um, if you have more questions about how divorce fits into your ACERA benefit, uh, go to our webpage, acera.org slash divorce, um, because that's also going to be an important piece for processing your uh, retirement allowance. So uh, now that that's been said, we're going to move on to section four. So keep scrolling down, and it'll be on our next page here. All right, so for section four, so these are boxes that you need to check to tell ACERA which deductions you want from your ACERA benefit. So one important note here is that for any deduction that you want to take out from your benefit, there's going to be a separate form. Uh, so all of the forms um, for these deductions are going to be on the previous page um, where you found this application for service retirement on our website. So just make sure that you uh, also submit those other forms as well. Um, checking the box here is not sufficient to enroll for these deductions, but this helps us know what you're wanting to take out from your benefit. So the first box is pertaining to uh, your optional election to enroll in a Sarah's sponsored health plan. Um, we say sponsored health plan, we mean our medical insurance plan. So this is going to be like Kaiser, United Healthcare, Aetna, um, something specific to ACERA. So if you do want to enroll in a Sarah sponsored plan, go ahead and check that box and tell us what your current health plan is. So if it's Kaiser, you'd put Kaiser there. Um, next box is, I elect to enroll my spouse and eligible dependents in my health plan. So if you have a spouse that's currently on your plan or dependents such as children on your plan, go ahead and check that box if you want to enroll them on ACERA's plans. Um, one thing to keep in mind is the medical insurance with ACERA is very expensive, especially when um, you're wanting to enroll dependents in our plan. Um, it is a very high level of coverage, but it's also very expensive. So make sure that you review our open enrollment booklet to understand what the costs are uh, associated with our plan uh, before you go ahead and enroll. 
Uh, if you want to review the costs, you can go to acera.org slash OE for open enrollment and then download our open enrollment guide from there. And it has all of the information about our health plans, the benefits, the costs, um, as well as dental and vision. So that's a really good resource for you. Uh, make sure that you check that out um, before you sign up the whole family for our medical insurance here. Um, Last, if you decide I already have health insurance or medical insurance and I don't need um, ACERA's medical plan, at least right now, um, you can choose this box that says, I do not wish to elect or enroll in ACERA's sponsored medical plan. So if you choose that box, um, you can still enroll with us at a later date. Uh, so you can enroll uh, during open enrollment, which is November 1st through November 30th of every year. Um, if you have a qualifying event, such as um, if you move and lose coverage or if you lose coverage in another way, um, you may be eligible to enroll outside of that open enrollment period. Um, it's also important to note that not everyone is eligible to enroll in ACERA's plans. Your benefit from ACERA, your retirement pension, needs to cover the cost for the medical insurance. If it does not, then you are not eligible to enroll in our plan. Uh, so that's something else that's really important to note here. Um, last, um, you're going to see last in this list, I elect to be a retiree member of ACRE or REAC. So we have a link out on our um, page that, uh, on the ACERA page that has information about both of these retiree organizations. So just go ahead and click the uh, link to find out more information and then you can optionally sign up for those if you want to. ACRE is currently a $3 per month deduction from your check. REAC is a $2 per month deduction from your check. Um, I'm not going to go into more detail on what those organizations are, so go ahead and read up on those if you want to uh, find out more information. Uh, next, we're going to authorize deductions from your monthly retirement allowance for the following items. So uh, again, if you checked up here that you want to enroll yourself in a sponsored health plan, that means you want deductions for medical insurance. So you're going to go ahead and check that box. Um, if you, um, so I'm going to uncheck it here just to keep going through. Um, if you want a dental and vision insurance through ACERA, go ahead and check off on those boxes. Um, again, if you want something from First United, so this would be a credit union deduction, we can take some money out of your check and reroute it into the credit union if you'd like, specifically for First United Services Credit Union, we have this agreement. Um, you have to go to First United Services Credit Union and let them know that you need a payroll deduction authorization, and they have a form uh, that you will fill out with them in order to set that up. Um, life insurance, most policies with the county um, and all of its employers right now do not transfer over to ACERA. So if you do want to continue a life insurance policy, um, you'll have to contact the Employee Benefit Center um, or, or depending on your department, um, whoever your, whoever is doing your uh, benefits, uh, they will be the ones to uh, tell you whether or not your life insurance plan can be continued um, into retirement, um, but you will have to pay out of pocket and it'll be a separate bill outside of your ACERA plan. So just keep that in mind. Um, ACERA will not host that deduction. Now, as far as your federal and state income tax, um, most people are gonna be taking out taxes from their retirement benefit. Your benefit is fully taxable, so make sure that if you are wanting to uh, take out tax deductions that you check these boxes and fill out the forms um, that are associated with those uh, deductions. Um, you don't have to take out taxes from your uh, ACERA benefit, but you do owe taxes on the benefit. So um, if you're not sure what to take out for taxes, we really suggest that you talk to a tax advisor to make sure that you get that straight uh, before you start and uh, complete the retirement process. So now that section four is complete, uh, we'll move on to section five. So section five has to do with direct deposit. So direct deposit is mandatory for ACERA benefits, meaning that we will not send you paper checks. Um, you have to set up a bank account for a direct deposit. One really important rule about this is that we cannot set up trust accounts. So if your account is in the name of a trust, even if it's just a trust for you, we cannot deposit into that account. And there's a rule here that explains um, what that information is, why we can't do that. Um, and there's that policy that ACERA has. So if you have a trust account, if that's the only account that you have, um, you can open an, another account with the uh, same bank or a different bank, um, and then we can deposit into that account. Um, you can take the funds from that account and switch it or, or put it to wherever you want at that point. It just can't be directly sent to a trust account. So keep that in mind. Very important rule. Here. So what's really important for filling out this section is making sure that you get your account number and routing number totally correct when you write it in here. 
Uh, so uh, make sure that you look at your check or look at your account statement from your bank to show exactly what that account number is and exactly what that routing number is. Um, even if it's off by one digit, it's going to cause problems with your application. So be really careful when you're entering that. Um, one thing that we will need you to supply for this section is a supporting bank document. So this would be in the form of a voided check. So if you have checks for a checking account, you can just write void on one and then send it to Acera um, in addition to this application. Um, if you do not have checks for the account, so if it's a savings account or if it's an online checking account and you don't have checks, um, you can go directly to the branch of that bank and ask for a letter that has your full name, the account number, the routing number, and the type of account that it is, checking or savings. Um, again, if it's a trust account, um, we're going to see that. It's going to show that it's a trust account and we will reject your uh, request to set up for a direct deposit and that can delay your payment. So be really careful about that. Um, we do have more information about it on our website if you're curious. So once you've filled out this information completely, you can go ahead and move on to section six. All right, so this is section six where you will name your beneficiary for continued monthly payments, a continuance. So for most people, you're going to be naming your spouse or state registered domestic partner here. Um, if you're single, be really careful about this section because this is not where you will name uh, the beneficiary that you want to pay most likely. And I'll explain that. So. Uh, the reason that you're naming a spouse or a state registered domestic partner for married folks is because this benefit is going to be paid to that person uh, for the rest of their life. Um, and so if you are single and you're naming someone for a continuance benefit, that could drastically change the retirement formula that we use to calculate your benefit to pay to you while you're still alive. So uh, what happens is what's a common mistake is a lot of people will rush into this section and say, well, I know my, my child needs to get this continuance benefit. Um, so I'll uh, make sure that I name them uh, to get that benefit, but they don't understand that uh, the benefit that we calculate is going to be much lower um, if you name a child because we're basing it on the youngest person's birthday. Um, so again, if you are going to name your child to receive any benefits payable upon your passing, um, this likely is not the section where you want to do this. Um, you'll likely want to leave this section blank um, if that's your goal. If you want to leave everything uh, to a child or a grandchild or a trust or a charitable organization, um, that will be for the next section, section seven. So focusing on section six, um, the beneficiary for continued monthly payments, um, go ahead and list um, the person to receive that payment for the rest of their life. Um, again, most of the time it's going to be a spouse or a state registered domestic partner that we name here. Uh, make sure that all of the information on here is totally correct. Um, email address is probably the, thing, the one thing that you could leave off um, if you don't know it, um, but you may have to contact that person to make sure that you get all of their information correct on here. Um, one really special rule about this, you cannot reassign this continuance benefit after you have retired. So you want to make sure that you name the right person here. Um, unlike the other beneficiary section that we'll move into in just a second, um, you can name different beneficiaries going forward even after retirement. Um, but for this section, after retirement, this one's locked in and you cannot change it. So make sure that you read this section thoroughly and understand who you're putting here um, because the next section is where you'll name for lump sum beneficiaries. All right, moving along. So this is section seven. So your beneficiary for lump sum benefits. So um, if you are married or in a state registered domestic partnership, you can also name that same person here for the lump sum benefit. So you'll see you'd name them down here. Um, if you want all of that benefit, the lump sum death benefits to go to that person, um, then you would just fill this section out that says percentage of benefit 100. Um, if you have a child or a trust or family member um, that you want to pay a death benefit to, this is likely the section where you're going to be filling out that information. Um, so let's say for instance, in the last section, you did not name your child for a continuance because of the change that it would make to your benefit, but you still want them to receive anything that's payable upon your passing without affecting your benefit. This is the section where you'll fill in that information. So uh, you would put in that person's information here. Um, you, there's two sections here where you can fill out. So you can do um, a split between two people if you want to. Um, put in their information. One important note for this is um, the percentage of the benefit needs to add up to 100 total um, between the two beneficiaries if you're going to name more than one. If you're just naming one beneficiary, then that percentage of benefit should say 100%. 
So make sure that you, again, contact that beneficiary if you need some of the information to fill this out correctly. So if you don't know the address for them, if you don't know the telephone number or the date of birth or last four of the social, we really need you to go get that information from that person or those people um, so that this information can be filled out uh, correctly. One very important piece here also is if you're naming a minor here, um, we, need some, we need a reference or a contact for who would be the guardian in that case, who should we contact in the event that we need to pay out death benefits to a minor. Um, so make sure that you provide that in the name field. Um, you can provide the name of the child who's the beneficiary, and then you could say the guardian or um, caretaker for that child, uh, who that would be and who we should direct uh, mail to in the event that we need to do that. Um, so make sure that you get that uh, all taken care of. Everything adds up to 100%, and then move on to the contingent beneficiary designation section. All right, so this next section is for your contingent beneficiary. So the reason that we have you name a contingent beneficiary is because there might be a situation where we can't pay your primary beneficiary. And that's usually because the primary beneficiary passed away before you did, and we didn't have an opportunity to get a new beneficiary designation from you. So in other words, a contingent beneficiary is your alternate. Who should we pay in that situation? So this can be a family member, a trust, or a charitable organization. Just make sure that the percentage of benefit, again, adds up to 100% just in this section. So we're looking at this um, box down here. So this box down here needs to add up to 100%. Again, up here, I'm going to scroll back up to the primary beneficiary. This box up here must also add up to a different 100%. So in other words, you wouldn't put uh, like 25% in this first primary, 25% here, 25, you can't uh, do that. We need to have each one add up to 100%. Um, so once you've completed that, uh, made sure that all this information is correct. Again, you might need to contact the contingent beneficiary um, in order to get the information uh, to supply on this form. Uh, once it's all complete and correct, go ahead and move on to the next section, which is going to be section eight. All right, so for section eight, um, this is the section where if you are married or in a state registered domestic partnership, we need to have that person print their name here and sign and date. Um, this cannot be done electronically. You need to have a physical signature on this form. Um, so once this is all saved and printed out, you can have them uh, sign and date and add their name here. Um, the reason that we have to have the spouse sign off on this form um, is because they have an interest in your retirement benefit. They're married to you or they're in a state registered domestic partnership with you. Um, so they have an interest in your retirement benefit, especially your beneficiary designations. So it's really important that this does get signed. The application will be incomplete if it's not signed. Um, next, um, in the next section, it's section nine. So if you are uh, single um, and or divorced or widowed, then what you can do is fill out this information here, choose the box that applies to you. So you can just check that box. Um, so you'd see um, the first one, I'm not married or registered with the secretary of state under a domestic partnership. So uh, if you are not currently married, then you would go ahead and check that box. There may be other boxes that apply to you. It's possible that more than one applies to you. Um, so just make sure that you check everything that applies to you. And then when you print out this form, uh, you'll go ahead and add your member signature, that's you, and the date that you signed. Um, so that is it for section nine. So again, if you are not married, and uh, then you will not fill out section eight, you'll leave that completely blank. Don't put your information there, just leave it blank, and then move on to section nine and fill out this section. Um, if your spouse does sign in section eight, um, in other words, you're married in a state registered domestic partnership, and that person prints their name, signs, and dates here, um, then you don't need to fill out section nine because it will not apply to you. So moving on now to section 10. All right, so this is section 10. So this page in essence is really just your acknowledgement saying the information that you've provided in this application is true and accurate. 
Um, also, your um, understanding that you know these rules that we're listing out here uh, related to the retirement benefit that you're going to collect. It's a final decision. So once you start collecting your monthly lifetime retirement benefit, um, we can't undo that. We're required by law to pay you that monthly benefit for the rest of your life. Um, so make sure that you really do want to retire before you submit this application to ASERA. Um, now with this uh, section here, there's also a really important piece to know about. So um, one of the things that is a restriction for ASERA members is working after retirement. So, and specifically we're talking about working with an Alameda County employer. So that will be Alameda County, LARPD, Alameda Health System, et cetera. Um, all of the employers with Alameda County, they have this restriction for you that says, depending on your membership, if you're a general member, you have to wait 180 days until you can return to work. If you're a safety member, you have to wait 90 days until you can return to work. And then even after returning to work, there's other restrictions that apply. Um, so go ahead and read through this. Make sure you understand um, how many hours you can work when you go back to work after retirement um, and all of the other rules that apply to that. There's a really good page on our website um, called Working After Retirement. You can check that out if that's something you're interested in. Um, but the most important thing is knowing that you can't go back to work right after you retire, um, not with the county anyway. However, in saying that, it's important to note that you can work literally anywhere else um, as long as it's not covered under Alameda County or one of its employers, um, and it's not contracted work to work for the county. Um, so in other words, if you wanted to go work for a different county, um, San Francisco County, for example, um, then you can work there as much as you want. You can start the next day. That's no problem. The restrictions only apply within Alameda County and its employers. So make sure that you understand those rules before you make the final decision to collect your retirement benefit. Once you've read through this and you understand and agree to all of these terms, then you can go down to the very bottom here and uh, add your final sign off. So when you print out this form, you need your physical signature here at the end on page five of five and also the date. Um, so your electronic signature will not work here. Um, so once you're ready to go ahead and uh, print everything out, make sure that you save it first so that you have a soft copy. So you can go up here into this uh, button here and save it, and that will save all of your changes, everything you've added to the form. And then you can go ahead and print it out and um, submit that to ASERA when you're ready. Um, we do recommend that you go ahead and complete all of the other forms that are required uh, before you submit this. Um, so instead of submitting everything in pieces, um, go ahead and submit everything at once and it'll make the process a lot smoother and it'll be a greater likelihood that you get your first check on time. All right, so that completes the video for the application for service retirement. Um, so make sure that you go ahead and complete the other forms that are here on the list in our website and you can go back to the page that I showed you at the beginning um, to get those other forms. Uh, we want to wish you a happy retirement and make sure that you stay connected with us through this whole process so that we can ensure that everything is taken care of and that we get you your first payment on time and then it's very easy after that. Um, so just stick with us, follow our instructions carefully and we'll get you through this process no problem.